And then lastly here we have, this is what I call the equipment room. They got a washer and dryer. They got the cabinets going up here. And we're gonna have electrical and all the cables to the entire house. I have a few more rooms I haven't showed you yet that I'm running. Um, and again, I recommend, you know, three cat six and one coax cable to each room in the house. Um, these, these outlets here are all gonna be inside the cabinet. And again, I left plenty of space. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll, you know, guaranteed I'm gonna end up shortening a lot of these when I do the final install and terminating the ends. But it's always easier to go longer than to go short, too short and then you have a problem. But again, notice that I zip tied each bundle and one bundle is CAT6. The under bundle is uh, RG6 coax. Plus, I've color-coded them for each room. Now, I'm, I know I'm sure there's, there's fancy labelers and all that, and I'll take care of that when I do the final install, but each room has its own color. So I've got red, green, blue, silver, so on and so forth. But I've, I've not only colored it at the ends, when well, you can't really see it because all the colors are facing the wrong way, but I've also colored it up by where the outlets are. So if for some reason these get clipped, you do have colors up here and you can easily, and plus, you know, I've, I've written down, you know, like upstairs or whatever, uh, what room. So I've kind of been a little bit overkill, a little bit too redundant. Now, see here, you can see some colors. But, you know, I, I do everything overkill, but because of that, um, I've never had an issue. So, and then up here, I've got cable zip tied out of the way, as far away from the AC cables as possible. Again, you're not gonna be avoid be able to avoid every you know every cable but if you can at least get it three or four inches away from the power cable and then up here see I even uh, zip tied some cables up on these beams up here um, of the struts so so uh, just to minimize it and then pretty much every run to every room in the house including there's a room upstairs I have run it uh, uh, as far away as possible uh, from the electric and and in places where I had to cross electric lines, if possible, I was able to zip tie them up on the supports and get these cables up out of the way. Now, I'll tell you from experience, I've done enough houses to know, see here's another example. See I have that cable right there, zip tied up on that beam, and it's a good, you know, six inches above that electric cable that's running uh, in the screen here up and down. Um, but I can tell you from experience, by doing this and taking the extra time to do this, you can almost guarantee that you're not going to have any interference. You're going to have a clean signal via, via speaker wire or uh, uh, CAT6 or, or coax. Coax is not as critical because coax wire is pretty well shielded. But I do recommend buying really good quality, you know, buy the best you can afford. The higher quality CAT5, CAT6, um, coax, you know, quad shielded is best the better your end results are gonna be. Because again, remember, you have one shot to pre-wire this house. And once the sheetrock is up and the insulation is in and all that, if you have an issue, it is a major pain in the butt. Trust me, it, <laughs> I've been there. It's a headache having to crawl in the attic with all the insulation, try to find your wires, trying to figure out where the problem is. Um, and it could be something as simple as you've got a wire too close to a, a major electrical wire and you're getting some kind of feedback off it. So here again in this room, this is the master bedroom, we're going to be putting a 43 inch Samsung the frame TV uh, on this wall and notice I got two um, low voltage boxes here but and that's why because on the other side of this wall is the walk-in closet where we're going to have a shelf and the control box for the Samsung TV is going to be located in that area. So. I put these boxes here so I got a straight pass through and notice again along here how I did this cable. I've got them zip tied and then I've also got this loose zip tie down here to help keep the cable in the wall so when the sheet rockers come in there's no cable sticking out that they're gonna pinch the sheet rock to. So I'm trying to keep it you know do as much as possible up front and again there's the color code blue um, and be sure you write down what each color means to what room. Um, and then that way you're covered. Um, there's no questions later because, you know, again, once the sheetrock goes up, it becomes <laughs> a whole different situation. 
Also, I'd highly recommend go through and take pictures of everything before the sheetrock goes up after you've done the pre-wire. That way, when the sheetrock is up and the insulation's done and you're looking at your wall and you're scratching your head going, okay, what did I do here? Uh, how many cables did I run? Um, how, you know, if you start to like yank on this cable here, like I, you know, all I have to do is snip that uh, a zip tie there and just grab these cables and pull them through the other side. But if the cable gets stuck, you can refer to your pictures later and figure out, oh, okay, this might be an issue. Um, and then it just makes, trust me, it just makes life a lot easier. So here, I'll give you a view from behind. This is the, the living room TV of how I got this conduit run. And then those are all my cabling and everything. And I really, really took special care to make sure. Now notice there's a power wire there, but I did put the power wire on the right side of the conduit. And I'm talking the, the Cat6 uh, coax cable on the, on the right side, but it is behind this low voltage box, so there's no chance of it getting pinched. But, you know, doing little, uh, taking extra precautions and doing little steps like this will greatly increase your odds of a clean install when everything is all done. So, um, little chance of, of issues uh, with noise or whatever. I did also run a coax cable to that side there because the customer was planning on uh, having satellite TV. So. It makes it much easier for the installers because they're gonna slap a dish in the wall. I've got the coax cable running through the wall right there with about 10 feet, 10 feet of excess on the outside. Again, coil that up and zip tie it. Don't coil it too tightly. There's always a risk that you can mess up the coax. But if you buy a really good quality coax, especially in bulk, I don't recommend going to Home Depot and buying a 100 foot length for 30 bucks. You know, I buy my rolls in 1,000 foot lengths, which Realistically, you will need, um, <laughs> especially if you're pre-wiring an entire house. So here we got the Cat 5 uh, going, to Cat 6 going to the office. It looks like I've got to do a little bit of cable cleanup there, put some zip ties on and get that away from that electrical. But here, I ran a coax cable for to the outside with about 10 feet of excess, and this is for the incoming internet. Um, in our town here, we have cable, and you see that right in the middle of your screen, that little green post sticking out is where the coax is buried by the road, and then uh, they'll put a trench in here, run a big cable to this location, put a box in the wall, make, again, make things tons, tons easier, and again, I've got to clean up this cable. This cable, uh, I haven't zip ties these yet, so don't get on my case if you're wondering. Um, all the cables from all the rooms run to that one location with the exception of the theater room and the speaker wire. Um, just makes it so easy because uh, we have a, uh, we also have a cable running to the roof. We're gonna put an outside antenna on it. Um, since all the cables run to this one spot, it just makes it super simple to feed off your internet coming in because that's where the router um, and modem will, will exist, and then maybe a switch. Well, obviously a switch, because we have a bunch of uh, Cat6 cables. Um, if you're gonna distribute sat or, uh, antenna to all the rooms, you can put a power distribution block there, go out to all the rooms. It just makes it super, super simple. So, um, running, again, you're running everything to one location. You know, if you're gonna be doing whole house audio and you got speakers all over the place, having your... <sighs> Um, whole house distribution amplifier and all the speaker cables coming to one location again makes it much much easier So I know this is a long video. I apologize, but uh, you know I, I, I want to try to give you the best information I can um, To help you guys out if you're doing this job on your own if you have any questions just reach out to me and I'll be happy to help um, If you like what you saw today, please subscribe and uh, give me a big thumbs up That definitely helps my channel YouTube is getting kind of st sticky about posting my video out there if nobody's uh, commenting or, or giving me a thumbs up. So, and this, this gentleman has a beautiful view as you can tell. We're out here in Utah. And I mean, look at this patio. I mean, can you imagine sitting out here every morning, cup of coffee or whatever, view like that. All right, guys, well, this is it for this video. So thanks for watching. And until next time, keep dreaming.